okay so <coughs> welcome to the kind of final lecture of this semester um the this today what i thought is i just work through one pipes example you know code it you know see the problems or uh, excitement whatever comes across okay so i'm going to use this as a <coughs> model uh, linux code chapter 13 that's where all the pipes uh, programs are <coughs> okay um let's see we are doing this uh, creating a pipe this is really doing a very minimal creating the pipe and writing to the pipe and reading from the pipe that's all it's doing here okay so let's go ahead and create the pipe okay that will create the pipe we assume that will result in true you know i'm not returning checking the error code or whatever so then fork this one we are going to do you fork that's a parent right that's a parent that's a child because parents gets the child's uh, pid remember that <coughs> okay so let's do the uh, minimalistic thing so you want to write something as a parent okay uh, right fds of what do you see here right fds of 1 right fds of 1 and you need the uh, some data and string length okay um hello string length is 6 there including slash 0 okay so then let's see here read read fd is of 0 temp maximum size i believe that's what you say basically so you are reading maximum buffer size and print of or put as temp <coughs> are you with me done a very simple thing created a pipe and i forked it and uh, parent is writing to the pipe and uh, child is trying to read from the pipe and uh, output it screen and we are done okay let's see whether this will work really doesn't matter any company is okay very good okay that's not very exciting let's go ahead write some more things um print of uh, parent uh, pid get pid child pid so my pid is integer okay and this is a string okay so let's see whether this will work okay not very exciting when it works properly right away okay so now let's make it a little bit more interesting now um 
that's a fun dot c that's a move fun dot c fun one dot c now let's do some cleanup you are writing parent is writing so after this after this you want to do close one we want to pretend as if you're kind of getting ready to execute another task okay so what did we say do fds of one we can do and then close fds of zero we didn't really do cleanup earlier by the way okay we just used it so that's a typical code Okay. This one you don't need because you're not reading from the pipe, okay? That's just a, we're not going to read from the pipe at all. Writing to the pipe, you want to write to one, standard output. So now that you have done all that stuff, now you can directly write to one. That's a cleanup, okay? This is what we are doing here. Redirecting standard output to pipe. That's how you do. You close the standard output, you dupe the uh, file descriptor output, uh, whatever that number it is. Uh, that will give you the, create the one also as the Output, uh, it kind of gets two numbers, basically. Pipe, uh, pipe has an input stream ID and output stream, right? Input and output. The output uh, stream number, we are duping, so that will become a one, because just now you closed one, right? Uh, so now the FDs of one and one, both are valid, so we go ahead and close the pipe descriptor. So going forward, you should be able to use one. Let's do the same thing here. Stop me if you have any questions. So right here, this here, we have no business with writing to the pipe because we're interested only in reading. Pretty much I can just copy this code. Six lines of code. Okay redirecting standard input to pipe right so how do you do that close zero dupe of fd sub zero then clean that up so now you can read from the standard input so this guy is writing to standard output this is read right, reading from standard input so behavior should be same Okay, so it uh, boringly it works exactly the same way. And if you do make it sleep for some time, you can go and check and all those things you can do. Check the, uh, how the descriptors are. Okay, so now let's see, we want to do something more. Um, So you don't want to do the work, now we want somebody else to do the work. So you can do right here, you can do some exec, and here also we can do exec, and uh, okay. So <clears throat> this example showed Create two processes, you did clean up, you're right, you are using standard output and the other processing standard input, so you manage to kind of uh, talk to, talk that one way, right? So, let's make it two way. So we, one of the easiest way we said was parent to child. Okay, parent to child. And then we said child to parent. We 
I hope these terms are not very confusing. Parent to child. Okay, so you have to create that pipe too. Uh, then uh, yeah, you can do the similar cleanups, right? Similar cleanups, and this is the this here code becomes a bit complicated. You know, I have to kind of uh, uh, keep up with it. So what am I going to do? Six. So this is. C2P dot do that. C2P, you are reading, so you are not going to write to it, you are going to read from it, right? So instead of standard, uh, your standard input is from the from the child. So then you can do do the same thing as this. If you want uh, this uh, uh, temp to move up, that way we can use everywhere we can use. Okay. So now, so you wrote uh, hello to child. And then we are ready to read. Read zero and temp hundred, right? So then um put us temp okay so now the similar code here for child uh, six okay. c2p child to parent this code is so child to parent, we are, uh, we are, uh, okay. So what are you going to do in child to parent? Child to parent, you are going to write, right? So, yeah, it's strange. You're not going to read from it. So you're going to redirect the output. Okay. So I have to say change this uh, text standard output to pipe, right? So child to parent parent to child okay child to parent you are uh, now you read it and then you are writing to parent right okay so what are you what do you want to write to parent three six nine 10, 11. Okay. So, we are writing to the parent. And uh, I should draw a picture to show what's going on. Read and you are outputting here. So, child is reading, the, reading from the parent and writing back, right, to the parent. And uh, parent is, parent wrote and the uh, parent is waiting to read okay and not much happens parent pid we probably missed it to read so read Close child to parent. Mm -hmm. 
this came parent to child child to parent okay close child to parent one okay and dupe we did that and uh, okay guys see any problems So we printed this, then we didn't print anything else. Even child didn't print anything, right? The earlier that was working. P to C, C to P, C to P. We did fork, right? We did pipe P to C, we did pipe C to P, okay, then we forked it and uh, this is the cleanup for the parent to child, um, we are not going to read from it, we are, uh, we are writing, writing portion we redirected so that we can use the standard output, okay. And then child to parent, you are not going to write to it because the child is going to write. This is the parent and the reading we are trying to, trying to get that pipe to become like a zero, okay. So we should be able to write it and we should be able to print it. See something? We have created two pipes. Let me draw it here. <coughs> okay. In case uh, you didn't really follow through all the zeros and ones. So he, he had initially a parent, right? One process. One process. And he created a pipe. One process automatically means it has a standard 0, 1, 2, right? And you have, you created the pipe. So there's a write descriptor and read descriptor, right? Remember it has comes with two numbers and reading is the, reading is the, the first number and uh, see when you say array of two numbers, right? That representation is two two integers, right? So it returns back when you do pipe. It creates a pipe FDs, right? Pipe FDs and returns. Basically, so you send a pointer address of that array. It fills in that F descriptors inside. So it puts three and four because that's what the next available numbers are. So three is for reading, four is for writing, right? So at this point we are forking, right? So then later, so you know the forking, how it looks is there here, this side also it looks the same way. Another process, you know, for that process, zero, one, two. And uh, for this also it looks like, are you with me so far? That's after the fork parent child 
you created the pipe first and then forked it okay remember that's very important you cannot for, you cannot create a pipe after forking then that uh, that pipe will be available only within the child you want to create a pipe then fork okay so then what later what we did is we created one more pipe so instead of just one pipe we created one more pipe so if you do that you get 3 4 and uh, 5 6 numbers okay something like that okay so I got two pipes. Are you with me so far? Okay. So then we want to do some cleanup. Well, this one is going to be parent to child. This communication. And this one is going to be child to parent. Okay. So which means, which means you don't need that. You don't need that. And uh, you don't need that. You don't need that. They, they can be closed right away. So now, can you see? The path it will take is this path. Like that. Similarly, this path. Then we would like to clean up even further so that this parent and child can act like become some other process. To do that, we, we want to kind of wherever you're writing, we want to change that to one. Probably I, don't, I cannot change this picture here. It becomes too crowded. So instead of four, we want that to become one. And uh, similarly here, instead of three, we wanted that to become zero. And uh, similarly here, instead of six, we wanted that to become one. Uh, like standard output. So here instead of 5, we wanted that to become 0. You understand the picture? What's going on? So, so in the end configuration will be like this. End configuration is, so remember it was kind of going like this. So we want this to become zero, we want this to become one, we want this to become zero, we want this to become one. So which means pretty much the remaining uh, standard error, error is the only one remaining. So once you have achieved this configuration, you can do exec and the parent and child can become any process, any command it wants. See. So some other command, it can be the cat, it can be... By the way, this is something shell never does. Shell never creates a loop. It's always one way, right? When you, in the shell, if you create a pipe-based command, it's just a one directional. Okay? So, if you do programmatically, you can do a lot more things. Okay? So, in fact, many times if you put like this, chances are many of them may in, end up in infinite loop. You know, so, okay? I don't know why you would do that, but it is possible to create. For example, you want to do some computation, send it to child. Child wants to do some computation, send it back. You know, so you can you can put it in a loop and you can keep doing it. Okay. For that, of course, first uh, our program has to work. Maybe cat and cat. You know, then they'll be reading and uh, outputting. So they they be, be busy sending back and forth, basically. You no. Know. You're effectively doing nothing in the process. Okay, let's uh, go back here. So now that we damage this enough, so time to revert back and uh, uh, revert back and simplify and see make this work. Okay, so I have taken off the cleanup operation. I've ca commented out the cleanup operation. Let's comment out here as well.
okay so those are the cleanup things we did for the new pipe right so new pipe and in fact i'm not going to even going to deal with the new pipe yeah let's not deal with the new pipe let's uh, revert back the original um, which means parent doesn't say anything at least we want the child to work child reading from zero yeah okay so this is really no additional functionality other than creating that pipe okay let's see whether this works okay we are back to our original uh, functionality parent said hello so now let's make the child write to the parent using their pipe id let's do that fd child to parent of one okay because there is no cleanup i haven't done the cleanup see so you have to use the pipes actual pid actual stream number so then let's go to the parent and use the child to parent read descriptor and then put yes okay okay let's see where this works and that does not work because we have the original but you don't see anything else why is that one way worked and other way is not working did we do anything different child to parent child to parent pipe we created uh, if all else fails you can always uh, try to debug kind of hard to debug the multi process ones we'll see uh, list list break 15 okay now let's print the p2c parent to child well 7 and 8 that may be because this guy is debugger may be using some pipes maybe remember we are not relying on this numbers even though i drew pictures 3 4 5 6 and all that that's just the numbers happen to be okay so typically okay so you want to get you see the numbers why don't we just print that numbers too right here we can print this numbers right print of p2c of 0 p2c of 1 c2p of 0 c2p of 1 Okay, let's do that. See, here it's three, four, and five, six. Once you enter the debugger, you get different numbers because the debugger is kind of mucking around with the environment too. So it's probably creating. Uh, See here, you get seven, eight, and nine, ten. So this is one of the serious problems, right? Sometimes I don't know whether you have noticed. I have noticed it when you run it externally, program fails. Within the debugger, it will work. Now what do you do? You know. No, no, it's not working fully. I'm just showing. I'm just saying that. See, the numbers looks different, right? It behaves differently inside debugger. That's how I want to highlight. We'll continue and debug the actual one. Okay, it's still not working fully. I just wanted to show that difference. Okay, so let's see. Program execute code thirteen. I don't know whether that's uh, really true. Um, break. Where do you want to break? Ah. Um, Sometimes a typical problem that happens is if you do try to open that something that's closed, 
okay you already closed it but you're trying to open breakpoint 35 run so <coughs> child has already kind of done the job let's see c2p how does it look okay p p2c that looks okay and the prior child is already gone at this point um, maybe because the child is gone still you should be able to read the remaining stuff even though child is gone next ah there you go sick pipe there's a pipe related problem most likely that means the other side is gone right child writes to it and it's gone that may be causing this uh, sick pipe okay so let's do something here let's do what can you do sleep let's try sleep Parent doesn't need a sleep because parent is really waiting for it anyway. Okay, let's see what that takes care of it. Oh, okay. We don't need it here. Let's try right directly. Still no good. Let's go ahead and run it here inside. This 13 is, is that a sick pipe? Well, thirty-five. So break point thirty-five. Run. Uh, C2P next. Hmm. This time it didn't crash. It does come. Then what? What happened? Put us. So you can see the high parent. And but I don't see the output. Oh, you yeah, redirected the output by then. <laughs> We're trying to output to the screen. We don't have outputting to screen anymore. See, parent, where the output goes to. So, you are thing. You are using one for two purposes, right? So now, what do you have to do? So all along it was probably working. Um, so what you do is go back here and whatever you are writing, write to the screen. How will you write to the screen? Um, the top. Parent. You want to write to the screen? This is writing to the child, right? Write to child, right? And put as, that will also use the descriptor 1, right? We don't want that. Instead, use this. Your printer for, uh, what can you do? Um, yeah, your printer will work. Your printer standard yes. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, 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 that will be the next one. I haven't used exec yet exec yet so we haven't reached that yet right so okay so now you have print of standard so hopefully this will work uh, display display properly okay my parents said hello hi parent uh, basically message comes here and uh, what do you want to say right here
Okay? Probably you don't need that sleep either. You don't need the sleep. Now uh, let's uh, make sure it works again. Okay, so no problem. So now I'm going to copy this fun3 to fun4.c and do the cleanup. So what's the cleanup we said? This one's. Is that okay to do that cleanup? You're writing to the child. Write is not affected. Uh, the read, now we are going to read from zero. Okay, read from zero, then you are using the standard error output. So look at this picture. You are uh, you're writing, as a parent is writing, parent is writing first, then reading, and then you are outputting here. Okay? With me? Make sense? That's what the parent is doing. Okay. So now the child. Child is uh, yeah, yeah. See, that's what the, we ran into problem this printf because you already redirected the output. See, so that's why we ran into printf problems. Make them f printf and use the standard error. You can also use write to two. That's alternate approach. Write two comma whatever. But that's a very low level. That's why we use printf, you have printf stuff. You know. So sometimes I have seen some buffering problems and all that too. Okay. Sometimes. Okay. So write now one. So will this work this time? Very good. Now, now uh, he's so excited to do exec. Let's go ahead and do the exec then. Um, fun. In fact, just to be hello. Okay. But I don't know what will happen though. Both input and output are redirected. So I don't know whether anything meaningful will happen. Um, right? Because they'll be busy talking to each other. That's uh, sending back and forth, but, but without nothing will be happening, right? Right? See this picture? If you put a, just exec cat for both of them, what they're going to do is they're going to read and write, you know, they'll be just busy sending the stuff around. Um, um, you can first make this uh, send it around. That's something you can do, right? So how will you do that? This one, uh, you write, then after writing it, yeah, first to write, and after writing is uh, you can, uh, you can put this in a loop. Right? You can put this in a loop. Uh, in fact, you can uh, send something else if you want. So let's, uh, let's try a few more, few more things. Instead of writing directly, why don't we do standard error? Standard output. Printf, uh, printf, uh, will that work? We are using, remember this is a system call. When you do read write, that's a system call. You directly invoke system call. Printf, scanf and all that, they are C standard library stuff. Sometimes C library tend to buffer things. That will create a problem for us, you know. <coughs> so, we'll see whether this works. is four still yeah okay we 
well only difference was the hello and uh, carriage return sometimes i have seen if you don't have carriage return sometimes it turns to buffer let's check that too see got stuck so that well that output is still sitting in the buffer well, to be flushed so other guy is not receiving it okay so so these are the little bit tricky things you have to be careful about okay so if you are using printf so whereas if you are using it right there is no problem right since the direct system call we sent uh, for uh, not slash n right we just sent it directly that right you want to check that again so we did that that was no problem see right so right will work fine because it's a system call uh, once you use the c standard stuff you know uh, you have to be careful okay so make sure you put a slash and usually new line character flushes it out so it won't keep it in the c standard library buffer okay so okay so now let's do something more interesting uh, print of hello um, what do you want to say you have your own counter let's say uh, really doesn't matter wherever you have just you are going to have one counter variable let's say right counter so now what i want output is print of the just to send the counter variable variable alone value alone okay so counter we are sending read then you can do the instead of read let's go ahead and scan scan right let's read the values scan of percentage d counter okay now then let's increment the counter and then writing a counter value you are reading it and then you are incrementing it you are going to keep doing it again and again and again okay so do the same thing here how will you do the same thing pretty much the same code should work you know just that instead of 3 uh, 3 uh, nine. why am i doing this one i am hoping this will be very helpful for the final assignment okay so okay so you have to kind of redo this code do print of your own counter value okay and then scan of right same code should work right scan of my parent sent counter okay so i'm not going to write that anymore you are just sending integers passing along so say it again oh okay uh it hadn't sent okay what what did the else had Or if oh okay, you don't need the cells, right? Okay. Mm. 
So each one is incrementing and sending it across and uh, parents sent in a uh, I guess that's the time they're bailing out, I guess. So they're not incrementing one of them. So, so, say it again. Yeah, less than 100. Yeah, that's right. So, there you go. Very cooperative incrementing, you know. So, what's this? First time alone that happened. My parents sent. Oh, maybe we did it. Uh, ah, there you go. See, I printed it without even reading it. We are not using temp anymore. What's this? At some point, they kind of uh, what is this? Uh, Let us study why per child sends for and oh maybe after sending we are increment. Is that why? Okay. So so here we got it. Okay. So the only the parents increment is taking effect. Is it? Parents sent child. Parents sent six. Okay. So that's because so in the top. Let's see how how we are doing it. Um, we got, we sent a counter, we got it, and then we increment and send counter. That's clean. That looks clean. Here, uh, we are supposed to, okay, we are supposed to read it and uh, read, what was there? Yeah. Supposed to read it, increment it, then write it, right? Yeah. Since I copied that code, I messed up there. Okay. So, per child, we wanted to read first, increment, then write it, right? Okay. Otherwise, some more extra stuff is sitting there. Okay. Hopefully, this is better. Yeah. Parents sent one, child sends uh, zero, parents sends zero, child sent one, parents sends back two, child sends three, like that. That looks a lot cleaner. Okay. Um, exec. Um, I guess that if you do exec with a cat, best thing you can expect is the infinite loop. Basically, infinite it will be waiting, basically, right? Because they are sending to two tasks each other, you know, so we can do that too. So, let's see, this one, counter, how about for now, I make this, uh, make this very big, or maybe I put your sleep there. I just want to see the numbers. You can put your sleep at 10. Yeah, okay. You put your sleep 10 here, put your sleep 10 here, okay. You put your sleep 10. No, instead of this, something else I did. Sleep 10. Okay. So, okay, they're sleeping. So, let's check. Yes, minus. So those are those are the processes. L S minus L prog two five four one six seven six seven <coughs> slash F D S F D. Uh, 
I didn't expect that. Some cleanup code is missing. That's what it shows, right? So the, for the child, child, uh, the writing, we probably forgot to close or something. See, for the other one looks perfect. Parent one looks perfect. Child alone doesn't look perfect. Let's look into the code. Child does look okay. Ah, that's a close is missing. Yeah, I commented out. See, hey, at least some value in looking at this. Right? So, okay. Now let's stop this one and uh, do this again. And two, four, three, six. Two, five, four, three, three. Okay. Yeah, I'm tired of writing fully. Question mark. There you go. Looks much better. See that? This input is same as the output of this, and this input is same as the output of this. Now to the final one, the exec. So, so this is fun4, fun4.c four, fun four to fun5.c. Uh, we want to do, we don't want to do all this stuff. We don't want to do all this stuff. Instead of this, you want to do exec. Um, only thing is basically you do want to write something so that they have something, <laughs> something to go by. You write to the buff, otherwise they won't have anything to that will be going around. Of course, you won't notice a difference, of course, because just going to data is just going to go around, right? So that one is fine. So now we want to do exec here. Exec. We have to look at the format. What is the format? Let's go here. Grab exec. No exec there. Pipe three. Exec. There you go. In fact, uh, it has a nice examples here itself, actually, to invoke another process and all that. So, exacl pipe four. That's a local. Uh, you may need a path name. Um, anything? Any other exacls? OD, okay. So there you go. This is another one, XLP. Uh, that's the 13 the parameter or something it stands for. XLP. What's the difference here? XL and XLP. Both look very similar. Oh, that's maybe a path. Um, hmm. I don't see a big difference. Anyway, so we can use this format to do the cat. Let's do that. So paste xlp cat cat. That's a file and a full path name or something so you have to repeat first two you have to repeat okay so this is variable number argument we are not passing anything so so here also okay so both are invoking exec where best thing we are expecting is infinite loop that's what we are expecting 
it's not every day you expect a program to do infinite loop, you know, infinite thing. Hooray! It didn't come to prompt. That's good. So now let's check here. Where are we? PS <coughs> cat, see? They became cats. Not yet adult anymore, right? And then they have this number, so let's see. Well, when you check the uh, proc, 2550 thing, it should look exactly the same configuration we had set up. So that's the configuration they are working. They are busily sending the stuff around. It did. XXL, it is a cat, right? See? This cat shows that it did take over. It became cat command. It won't, right? Cat, what does it do? If you just type in cat, it's waiting for standard input and it's going to output standard output, see? That's what it does. So it's doing, since the input output has been redirected, it's doing that. I wish we know what's happening there, but uh, <laughs> that will be debugging the cat, see? So this pipe Yeah, it will go in the, uh, infinitely. And see, the thing is, it's a pipe. Pipe doesn't break. You can write how much ever you want. And you are not uh, keeping cat command uh, just since the reading and sending it out. It's not keeping travel. It won't run out of memory or anything like that. So, okay. So, what a way to finish the class with the infinite running program. Uh, I, I think I have another uh, video as well. I'll try to find the pi about pipes in case if you want to see the other programs. See, one thing we didn't do. One thing we didn't do is go through this various pipe programs, not this, this ones. See, there are several pipe uh, programs, you know, uh, go through explanation. I have another video covering that. See, we don't have time here. So I'll try to find that to put it in the, our course. I will also put the solutions for the sample questions, okay? So after all the IC weather and everything, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Yes. Not for the online section.